Hello everyone and welcome to the Plug in India channel. We have a special surprise for you because it was a surprise for us as well. And there has a lot been going on in the media, also on social media and Twitter about electric vehicles, specifically scooters catching fires. And these are battery fires. So we did a investigation, tried to find out what's going on and Kamlesh from Plug in India has compiled a blog. So he's put all of these articles together and let's talk a little bit about this and try and get some perspective on what's really happening over here. Uh, uh, so there are these uh, Twitter, these tweets, like there's Mr. Manjunatha who's put a tweet of a Ola S1 Pro, uh, which caught uh, fire in Maharashtra recently. And uh, Electric Vehicle Info put a, a tweet about another electric vehicle, it was a pure EV, which caught fire. Both of these had a lot of white fumes, smoke coming out. Definitely the buck has to stop at the OEMs. They cannot shirk responsibility. Safety is most important. Kamlesh makes some very valid points. The first thing he says is that uh, these OEMs need to release a report which detailed investigation uh, which contains a detailed investigation from their respective R&D teams as to what caused the fire and the only people who can actually give us the correct information from the logs, uh, the telematics uh, that has been captured by the vehicle are the OEMs because they know their vehicle the best. They should identify the root cause and communicate with their customers which is the second point which he makes that there should be very good communication between the OEMs and the unfortunate customers who are involved in these accidents because they are the ones who really need help the most. They have made a big investment and they are now concerned their safety first and then about the money that they spent. So over the years and in our opinion, we feel that these three OEMs have not done a great job at communicating in the sense Ola Electric does a lot of PR campaigns, but customer education about the specifics of EVs, batteries, temperatures, usage, this needs to be done a lot more. Pure EV does communicate to their customers individually, which is very good. But again, it ignores public communication, which is very important. And they should let the people, the world at large know what's going on. Again, Okinawa never responds to our emails, so we don't know how to help. And uh, they have to get a little bit more into education about this technology. This is a new technology which is coming up very fast because of the urgent need that the planet has to shift to something sustainable. There's a lot of drivers and a lot of force over there. So that hence the need for rapid education is required. We can't just allow it to happen organically like it did with ICE vehicles. All right. So uh, over the last year, we've been uh, talking and speaking to quite a lot of people at Ola. And we know that they have a very large R&D and engineering team working on this. And uh, they have told us that the company is taking this incident really quite seriously. And the S1 Pro has been under testing for more than a year now under very hot weather and conditions in Krishnagiri, Tamil Nadu and other places. So definitely this fire happening is not something that they are going to take lightly and they are fully armed and equipped to deal with it. So uh, that's something that we should keep in mind. Uh, there is a technology that they have spoken to us about which is called OlaSense. Now this is something that monitors the battery pack, the system and checks if any even individual cell is misbehaving or is under stress. Why did this not get triggered is something that they are investigating. The team of course doesn't know right now why the Ola Sense didn't kick in and we are eager to find out from them what really happened. So until that time that we have proper information, let's not speculate and uh, jump into a lot of you know Ola bashing or EV bashing for that matter. So Kamlesh also spoke to a learned professor from IIT Hyderabad who is working on battery cells. And he did not want his name to be published for privacy reasons. And his comments were as follows. He says, from observing the fire, I can see that the lithium NMC cells used by Ola seems to be of good quality. In my research, I have tested multiple lithium cells, A grade, A plus, B grade and more. I have seen how they burn or explode. In this case, there was decent amount of time available before you can see explosions. Also, I see that the explosions that typically happen with NMC cells were happening in a controlled manner. That is a sign of a good cell quality. No one has seen a 4 kilowatt hour lithium battery fire so far. I have seen cells that explode immediately. I have also seen cells shouting, shooting out from the battery pack like tracer bullets. Uh, in this case, there was a lot of time and nothing of that sort happened. If the cells were of poor quality, you can see the cells exploding at a rapid pace and it can even reach the other side of the road. Thermal runaway could have happened maybe because of a short circuit. But it needs more investigation. I'm not sure if Ola's battery pack has phase change material that too helps in delaying explosions. 
All right, so I think that comment from the IIT professor was very revealing. Uh, this could have been so much more dangerous. Uh, tracer bullets across the street. Oh my God. Uh, and so uh, that way, I feel that a lot more information should be given to the public. Uh, the ARAI and ICAT reports that have been uh, generated should be made available to the public so that we know like a company from like Okinawa or Pure EV or Ola, where they get the batteries, what kind of a BMS there is. Of course, we do know some things about the type of chemistry and all, but a little bit more in detail so that we know that we are buying a safe product. These kind of things should be made more public and more available and accessible to people. So next off, let's take a look at the Pure EV scooter fires. There have been three in the last eight months, which is very worrying. And uh, Pure EV does speak to us. We've been in touch with Dr. Nishan from Pure EV. And he's been assuring us that they are doing work on investigating these incidents with all seriousness. But so many accidents do not bode well for the company. They have released a kind of a stock boilerplate PR statement over here, which tells you that there have been blasts and what kind of uh, uh, safety features they have built into their systems and what could happen about thermal runaway, pressure cooker situations. Let's quickly take a look at uh, a video of one of these fires that happened. You can see a lot of white smoke billowing out of the scooter like an anar in Diwali. And then later on, this is the phase change material that is basically disintegrating as the fire reaches it. And this controls the fire and doesn't allow explosions to take place. Once this is done, then those tracer bullets will start coming out. But by that time, one hopes that the battery uh, reaction has subsided, subsided and uh, we did not receive any public report from Pure EV earlier either about the fire that took place. So there is something that these big companies do which is basically they try to sweep the events that are happening which are not pleasant under the carpet hoping that it will fade away from public memory. We don't want that to happen. We want to know what happened. We want some uh, investigative reports being published so that we can prevent such situations in the future. And uh, Dr. Nishan did say that his team is working on investigative reports. So let's wait and watch. Now, what are the media doing about this? What are they saying? Well, unfortunately, it seems that they're all shillings for the ice and fossil fuel industry. And they're just helping to spread the FUD, the fear, uncertainty and doubt. Nobody is actually trying to show any kind of investigative report or some analysis. So let's quickly take a look at a couple of tweets that we've got. Uh, here, there is Mr. Nikhil Chaudhary who says that uh, summer is barely here, ice vehicles are catching fire. So this is not just EVs which catch fire. These are many petrol and uh, diesel vehicles. So uh, here in Madhya Pradesh, you've got a fuel tank of the car that has exploded. Uh, where is the media on this article? Of course, you've got India Today which covered it and it quietly went away into the background. Uh, Time of India covered another article. A private car exploded, uh, 15 minutes the traffic was jammed. And where did this get the kind of social traction? It did not. It was reported, it was gone in the sites. It was something that happens daily and people don't really care. A parked Maruti <laughs> Balino, <laughs> but Maruti going head to head with all EV enthusiasts and screaming about the ills of EVs. And here their cars are bursting out in flames. What's causing more pollution? <laughs> What's getting affected by the heat over here? So definitely we need to take a look at this side as well. Uh, Nikhil is saying that uh, even after decades of development, these vehicles are still catching fire and causing dangers and exploding in public spaces. Where is the question on the manufacturers and the testing of these? Do the media and industry actually even care about this? Isn't this real hypocrisy, guys? Uh, there are a few more tweets from the Tesla Club of India. So here's a tweet from the Tesla Club of India where he raises this issue very well. He says that we don't ask the same questions for the ice industry. This is the real hypocrisy. Like there are problems and there are fires in ice vehicles as well, not only EVs. And what you get when an EV catches fire is this kind, this kind of hyperbole from people like this. And uh, they're just typing stuff on their keyboards without trying to understand what's going on. Uh, trying to get more ratings, more views. Here's some lady from Money Control who has no right to say anything about EVs or technology, but there she is. Uh, maybe she's never even driven an EV herself and experienced the benefits. And she's asking us and telling us, telling everybody that the environment can go screw itself. I mean, that's a lot of concern that she's showing about the world and herself uh, by that matter. And here again, this guy thinks we've got a public safety crisis. <laughs> what happens when, because of all the pollution and climate change that's happening because of the pollution that has been caused by ice vehicles. So there are such people 
at least the ev community accepts that there are problems and we are trying to find issues we are questioning the companies manufacturing these vehicles so the main difference between the ev community and the mainstream auto journalist is exactly this that we accept the failures and we are willing to work and find out what really happened the auto industry journalists the ice media the fossil fuel propaganda people they just want to blast things and become famous and popular and push something down which they feel threatened by so from this it's quite clear that all these auto journalists are nothing but uh, paid mules for the ice industry the fossil fuel industry and they are just trying to cause hysteria and hype trying to scare people from using a truly good technology which will help make the world a better place so uh, we urge you not to share their articles not to spread the fud so i have been speaking about all these uh, ev fires and what's been going on in the press and media and uh, what would be a responsible way of sharing good information so what can you do as an ev owner basically there are a few simple precautions which you can take uh, these batteries the nmc chemistry is really don't like heat so you can stay away from charging the moment you get back home from a ride maybe come back after 2 hours put your vehicle on charge for me personally i wouldn't want to bother with that so i would want the oem to take care of it put in a timer or some kind of a temperature sensor so that the vehicle you plug it in and you move off and later on when the temperature is lower the vehicle automatically starts charging so that would be a good feature to have but what you can do for right now is don't charge immediately when you get back from outside second thing is you could always park in shade maybe take a little bit of an extra effort make sure that there is a shaded tree or some area where there is no direct sunlight and park your vehicle over there that will help a lot and in summer uh, when there is peak heat don't accelerate too much don't strain and stress your pack so much that it gets hot and then it has to go into some kind of a shutdown or go switch into evo mode so ultimately it's very simple lithium ion cells don't like stress and rapid charging and discharging at high c rates so don't cause stress to the cells and with just that simple tip you can most effectively use your evs and will have no problems whatsoever there are some tips that kamlesh had shared on his blog the link is in the description below check them out and there is a video that we have over here with mr abhay patwardhan who works for cheda electricals and he has some things to say about the fire safety and various things about uh, battery charging discharging so do take a look at that uh, youtube video the link is given in the description below so here atul ji and abhay patwardhan talking about fire and safety and handling of these things in uh, evs okay. so there are calls already for the government to put in some additional regulations and steps for batteries in electric vehicles and uh, the central government has formed a team of experts to investigate all of these incidents that are going on in the uh, ev space right now and the only oem also need to step up a little bit improve the battery cooling in their packs and most modern electric cars like the nexon ev for instance have liquid cooling to maintain the temperature of the packs and these kind of things are very essential and of course they also increase the cost of uh, the product in this case electric scooters this might be an issue there are many things going on there are calls to ban nmc chemistry and have only lfp cells in india and they have higher temperature tolerance tell us what you think about this in the comments below do let us know what you feel could be done uh, on part of regulatory bodies on part of oems on part of ev owners to uh, maintain a safe environment for all so overall i think let's remain level headed there are just a few cases from the hundreds of thousands of vehicles electric scooters and cars that have been sold in india and uh, it's very easy to kind of blame something which is new coming into the market to feel threatened by the new technology but let's not get into that even samsung had an issue with exploding galaxy 7 note batteries and they were able to solve this and improve their products so i'm sure the ev manufacturers in india and other places can also uh, find a very good solution for this so that's basically what we're trying to say in entire coverage let's remain level headed and be grateful that no one was harmed in, the, in these incidents so kamlesh also owns an ola s1 s1 pro and uh, so read his ownership blog you will get a lot of clues about uh, ev ownership and what are right ways to maintain because he does do these things that we are suggesting um, you know wait for charge uh, park in the shade and uh, so far in more than 8 9 years of owning evs he has had no problem so far so uh, guys uh, with that i leave you with these videos of ice vehicles burning check them out 
and see what happens when you have petrol and diesel vehicles on the road which are so dangerous and we really have to get them off the streets because not only are there immediate dangers from these ice vehicles but there are long term dangers as well as far as global warming climate change is concerned and i know that most of you feel very disconnected because climate change and global warming is a huge issue no one person can handle it but all of us having a little bit of a drop a contribution to the ocean which is sustainability to head towards saving these <laughs> would help here are some um, ice vehicle fires uh, that's a tata nexon definitely not an ev you can see the tail pipe and this is a petrol uh, version of it if i'm not mistaken and horrible horrible accident in the middle of the highway explosion no time to escape guys never buy ice vehicles never buy these diesel petrol vehicles they are so dangerous 30 40 years down the line and people are still manufacturing dangerous ice vehicles we have an option now evs are available shift to evs leave these ices you know they're not worth your time energy or effort so here you have an mg hector uh, an electric version of the mg is available guys go in for that don't buy this polluting ice vehicle it will cause you problems just like you can see the entire road the traffic is jammed no warning suddenly just explodes into fire are dangerous for people at least the evs you know they have the smoke they have the safety measures most of the time they don't even catch fire they shut down or go into eco mode not allowing you to even catch a fire but this is not possible with these ice vehicles evs have advanced early warning systems and even then when there are fires they aren't as dangerous this one here is a two wheeler as you can see this is a bullet and uh, it has suddenly caught fire the fuel tank is right there very really flammable dangerous material and now people are clamoring because at any point the entire tank and the motorcycle itself could explode and hurtling debris in every which way in every direction so stay away from ice scooters uh, stay away from ice motorcycles evs are available go for those uh, you should stay clear of these ice uh, dangerous ice vehicles at any cost here we go uh, there's another uh, ice vehicle uh, and there are many ice vehicles there's a tank right below the entire petrol tank is right there and look at that no time suddenly you are burning there are no flames there are no warning indicators there are no fumes or smoke which you have in electric vehicles and now his uh, hose has caught fire and now they are running and of course uh, 20 30 years many times this has happened Okay, so now I'm waiting for the explosion to happen. And there, suddenly his motorcycle has caught fire. His pants have caught fire. He doesn't know what the heck to do, and he's left the bike right there and run away. And everybody is in panic. That's a very dangerous thing to do. This would have not happened had this been an EV. There would have been smoke. You would have enough time to take it away and park it somewhere where nobody would get hurt. But here, it's right next to the petrol tank. Everybody is fleeing the place and. yet the entire petrol tank has burned up the entire petrol bunk imagine the loss uh, of ecosystem the amount of smoke that's gone up the loss of uh, material uh, too much so there you have it guys this is what plugin india has to share with you uh, there are tons of more such clips on the internet unfortunately our media and press doesn't pick them up and uh, we're not stopping ice vehicles from functioning let's go safe let's have a cool headed approach about this So have a great day we drive electric and so can you